Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction on how to use classes and objects in Python. I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with these concepts. So if you're new to you know, the concepts of classes and objects, I'd recommend my introduction to classes and objects video first. Okay, so here's the class we want to create. It's going to be called robot and it'll have three attributes or three instance variables, name, color, and weight. Those are the name of the robot, the color of the robot, and weight of the robot. And then it's going to have one function, introduce self, where when you run this function, it'll just print out my name is the name, whatever the name is. And from this class, we want to create these objects. The first object will look like this. It's going to have the name Tom, the color is going to be red in a string, and the weight will be 30 to show that it's 30 pounds. It's going to be an integer. And we're going to put this object in a variable called r1. And the second object we're going to create will look like this. This robot will have the name Jerry, the color will be blue, and weight will be 40. And then we're going to put this object in a variable called r2. So let's now see how we can create this class called robot and these two objects out of that class in Python. The first thing we need to do here is, of course, we need to create a class. For that, you can just write class robot colon, and notice here that R here is capitalized, and then four spaces after that. And we're going to implement the function we saw earlier, introduce self. For that, you can just write def introduce underscore self, parentheses, colon, and four more spaces after that, and then print, double quotes, my name is, plus self.name. And this keyword here, self, is sort of like this in Java. And it'll refer to whatever object we're running this function on. So for example, if we run this function, introduce self, on an object whose name is Tom, this is going to print out, my name is Tom, because self will refer to that object. Now this function, you know, if you see, it looks like a regular Python function. We're defining a function called introduce self, and then below that we have some implementation. But actually, when this function is within a class, when this function is a method of a class, you need to add an additional argument, and that's going to be called self. So this self is exactly the same as this self right here. So in Python, Basically, you need to add this additional argument called self to every method you want to add to this class. And once you run this block of code, this class is going to be created. And you might say, what about the attributes like the name, weight, and color? We're going to worry about that later. So let's run this block of code for now. Now that we have defined this class, we'll be able to create an object out of this class. To do that, you can just write r1 equals robot parentheses. Again, note that the word robot is capitalized here. And this simply says, create a new object with the class robot. And here you're using the default Python constructor for this class robot. And to set the attributes, you can just write r1.name equals tom, r1.color equals red, and r1.weight equals 30. And when you run this cell, a new object has been created, it's assigned to R1, and then its attributes have been set. And then if you want to run this function, introduce self, on this object, you can just write r1.introduce self, parentheses, and you don't need to pass in any arguments here. And when you run this cell, what's going to happen is it's going to go into this part of the code, and then self will refer to R1. And so this part of the code will look like print my name is r1.name, and r1.name is of course Tom here, so it should print my name is Tom. Let's see if it works. And it did. We see my name is Tom right here. And just like that, you can create another object too. Let's go back into this cell, and let's write r2 equals robot. This will create a new robot object, and then let's set its attributes too. So r2.name equals Jerry, r2.color equals blue, and r2.weight equals 30. 
let's actually set the weight of R2 to 40, like we saw earlier. And once you run this cell, you'll have an object in R1 and another object in R2 with different sets of attributes, of course. And then at this point, you should be able to run R1.introduce self and R2.introduce self. So the first line should print, my name is Tom, just like we saw earlier. And then the second line should print, my name is Jerry instead. So let's see if we can get that. And that's exactly what we see. Okay, going back a little bit, when you see this block of code that we use to create these two objects, you might say, well, that's not great because here we're writing r1.name equals Tom. But if we misspell the word name, for example, if we wrote r1.name me equals Tom, it's gonna stop working because if you look at this function in particular in this class, we're writing here print my name is self dot name and this piece of code basically depends on us writing the attributes name name correctly for it to work what i mean by that is for example you know if you misspell the word name by writing r1 dot namey equals tom the attribute called name does not exist in this object anymore so we can actually see what's going to happen if we try that so let's run this cell again and this is not going to give us any error because when you write r1.namey equals tom, the attribute called namey is just defined and then the value tom is set for that. But when you run this block of code, r1.introduceSelf, let's comment out the second line and let's focus on the first line. When you run this part, it'll say attribute error. And it says robot ad object has no attribute name. And that's because it has the attribute name me, but it doesn't have the attribute name. So this is probably not the best way to deal with different attributes we have. Let's see how we might be able to fix that. And the way you can fix it is basically by using a constructor. And in Python, you can create a custom constructor with this keyword, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. So there's the word init, and it's surrounded by pairs, two pairs of underscores, and then parentheses. And let's have this function take three arguments, given name, given color, and given weight. So these are the name, color, and weight we wanna set for this particular object that we are trying to create. And then we can write here, self.name equals given name, self.color equals given color, and self weight equals given weight. And this block of code, of course, says set this object that we are just creating, set that object's name to given name, and set that object's color to given color, and set that object's weight to given weight. And earlier I said you need to add this self keyword, this additional argument to every function we, def we define in this class and the constructor is no exception. So you actually need to write self as the first argument and then the arguments that you wanna add in. And actually, just like many other languages, a common practice here is to name these arguments exactly the same as the attributes that we wanna set. You don't have to do it, but that's just a style thing. So let's just do that. Let's change given name to name and then given color to color and given weight to weight. And once you run this block of code, this class is gonna be refreshed with a new constructor. Once we have a custom constructor in our class, the default constructor that we used will stop working. So let's just comment out this block of code and then let's rewrite it using our new constructor. For that, you can just write r1 equals robots parentheses, Tom, comma, red, comma, 30. Let's capitalize Tom here. And then R2 equals robot, Jerry, comma, blue, comma, 40. And these two pieces of code do exactly pretty much the same thing as what we saw earlier. But as you can see, this is much cleaner because you don't need to specify the attribute names manually every time.
And just to reiterate, just to sort of clarify, this line R1 equals robot tom red 30 will create a new robot object and then it'll set tom as its name because tom will go in here as the name argument and then it'll go in here self.name and self again will refer to the object that we're creating. So it's sort of like saying r1.name equals name, r1.color equals color, just like we did earlier here. And of course, it's the same thing with r2. Okay, and to make sure we don't have anything left from the previous code we were using, let's go to kernel and click restart and clear output. This is gonna clear out every variable we defined earlier. And then let's load this class again and let's run this cell. And at this point, we should have R1 and R2 objects defined. So we should be able to run r1.introduceSelf and r2.introduceSelf. And that should print exactly what we saw earlier. My name is Tom and my name is Jerry. So let's see if that works. And it does. All right, you'll be able to find links to the sample code I used in this video in the description below. And if anything was unclear in this video, please let me know in the comment below as well, because you know I might be able to address that in the next video. And in my next Python tutorial video, I'm planning to cover how multiple classes and objects can interact with each other in Python. So look out for that as well. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.